Hello everyone. In this series of lectures, I will provide you with essentials of data science. This course is targeted for managers who are not data scientists but need to manage data analytic projects. This course is also targeted for managers who want to introduce data-driven management, so the knowledge provided in this course is both theoretical and programmatic, but not includes the details of the mathematics and coding. However, anyone who are beginners in data science are also welcome because this course can provide you with essentials for learning technical aspects of data science. By the end of this lecture, we will be able to explain what data and data literacy are, explain what data science is and why it has drawn much interest, and explain the IKW pyramid and apply to a real problem. As an introductory section, let me explain why we need to have data literacy. Let's see the table below. It shows the average score of physics exam in two students' groups. The perfect score is 100. As shown in the table, the average score for group A is 61.6 and that for group B is 56.6. So, group A is higher than group B by 5 points. Based on this data, I conclude that group A students achieved higher performance and that we can regard the education in group A as the better practice. Can I say that? How do you think? There can be various opinions. For example, yes, you can say that. Or, 5 point difference is not so large as an average of an exam whose perfect score is 100. By the way, what if we get the information of score distribution? This figure shows the distribution of score for each group. As we can see, score of group A is more widely spread than that of group B. So, in group A, some students got good scores, but some others got very poor scores. Thus, it is questionable to conclude that group A students are better in exam than group B. Let's move on to the next example. According to the World Happiness Report 2022, Japan is ranked at 54th in happiness, based on a three-year average from the year 2019 to 2021. Considering that Japan is the world's fourth largest economy, I wonder why Japanese people are not so happy. The relatively low rank of Japan is partly due to the low level of generosity. For example, in 2021, Japan is ranked at 104th in generosity. Do you think Japanese society and Japanese people are not generous? And why do you think so? According to the report, Generosity is defined as the residual of regressing the national average of Gallup World Poll responses to the donation questions. Have you donated money to a charity in the past month? A log GDP per capita. But can you explain the definition of generosity more easily? Can you illustrate it with a figure? This is a problem of data literacy. In recent days, data is all around us. Our society is filled with data, and we are overwhelmed with lots of data around us. Data is not always simple and easy to understand. Many of data we encounter and collected are complex, even though it seems simple at first glance. We, not limited to data scientists, need to handle data and get insight from data in our working life. So, we need to develop our data literacy. According to Wolf et al., data literacy is the ability to ask and answer real-world questions from large and small datasets through an inquiry process with consideration of ethical use of data. Data literacy include abilities to select, clean, analyze, visualize, 
critic and interpret data. It also includes the ability to communicate stories from data and use data for designing and implementing solutions. In particular, compared to the traditional approach in data analysis, research and practice of data science emphasize the importance of cleaning, visualizing, and communicating. In practical fields, we can obtain data using questionnaire survey, and it often contains misspelling, ununiform writing, and non-response. Moreover, recent technology enables us to obtain useful data from image, movie, and natural language, but these are not collected as structured data, and so not ready for analysis. Therefore, we need to spend much time in data cleaning and data preprocessing, including data cleaning. Visualization is also important. Visualization is useful for us to obtain intuitive understanding of data. It also provides us with a picture of data structure we cannot see only from quantitative metrics. Moreover, visualization is effective in communicating the insights from data to our audience. Communication, often combined with the use of visualization, is critical to put the insight into practice. By communicating the results and insights effectively, we can promote our audience's understanding and persuade them. Effective communication requires the ability of data visualization and storytelling, which are covered later in this course. Today, we are in a society filled with three types of information disorder. They are misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation. Misinformation is when false information is shared, but no harm is meant. This information is when false information is knowingly shared to cause harm. Malinformation is when genuine information is shared to cause harm. Therefore, as a person with data literacy, we need to understand data critically and collect and use data in an ethical way. Moreover, in the process of data science workflow, we should proactively protect individual and collective privacy and well-being.